Let's move on to a code example of the factory method pattern. In this example, we're actually going to use the abstract factory in conjunction with the factory method. And we'll also see how to work with interfaces with those patterns. The factory method pattern is about object creation. And what we're interested in doing is creating multiple different objects with different database types. And this is the same basic idea that we had for the abstract factory pattern as well. But our application code had to understand and manage those different database types up in the creation process. We'd like to isolate that from our application code. And that's what the factory method will do for us. In our class diagram, we have a database factory. And this has really got the factory method, which is called create database. Then we have the iDatabase interface. It has two properties on it, command and connection. In the abstract factory, this was an abstract class. But in our abstract factory example, it also had no implementation in it. So in this case, I'm going to make it an interface. And I'm going to have two classes that implement that interface, the SQL Server database class and the OLAYDB database class. And both of those will implement the command and connection properties. And of course, they'll have private fields that correspond to those properties. And finally, we'll have an enum for our database type. And we'll just be supporting SQL Server in OLAYDB. And of course, this general pattern applies to all database types and you can apply it to data sources as well. For instance, if you were creating a measurement app and you were getting data from a serial port or perhaps an ethernet connection or some other device drivers, you could create the same pattern for those different types. And your enum would reflect those different types. So here's our iDatabase interface. And this is the interface that the application will actually be using. So we'll call it iDatabase and we'll have a connection property and a command property. Note I also did one other different thing from the abstract factory. The abstract factory used a DB connection type for the connection and a DB command type for the command. In this case, I'm using the interfaces instead. And again, you could support either way and it really wouldn't matter for this particular example. I just wanted to demonstrate that you could use interface types for your properties and return methods, as well as using abstract classes for those returns. For that matter, you could use concrete classes as well, so long as they were more basic classes as opposed to a SQL Server DB connection. We're talking more like an integer or a string on the interface. Again, you can use interface types on your properties within your interface, or you could use class types as well. The choice is yours. Our SQL Server database class implements iDatabase, and it has private members of SQL connection type and SQL command type. But of course, it implements an IDB connection type, and that's the implementation of the iDatabase interface. SQL connection does implement IDB connection, so that's the object I'm actually going to return. So I'm going to lazy load the connection, meaning that I'll check to see if my connection member is null, and if it is, I'll get my connection string from the configuration manager and the connection strings object, and these connection strings are stored in app config. Once I get the connection string, I'll create a new SQL connection. And I'll set my private member equal to that new connection. And finally, I'll return that private member. If I've already gone through this creation process, I don't recreate it. So that's the lazy load aspect of this approach. And for IDB command, we're doing effectively the same thing. We're lazy loading the command object, and we'll create the command and set its connection. The OLADB database has the same sort of logic as well both for IDB connection and IDB command. Now all that is basically the abstract factory pattern, except I used an interface as opposed to an abstract class. Now I also have my enum for my database type, and I'm supporting SQL Server in OLADB. And finally, we get to the database factory, and it has a public static method, meaning that I don't actually have to create an instance of the database factory to call this method. I simply call database factory dot create database. It'll return my iDatabase interface, or actually an object that implements iDatabase, and it takes a parameter, a database enum type. And I do a switch on that enum type, and if it's an OLADB type, I return an OLADB database. If it's a SQL Server type, I return a SQL Server database. So that's all this factory does. Now here's where you can use a little bit of an imagination. 
If I had multiple steps in the construction of these various objects, this is the area that I would probably use a builder pattern to create the more complex construction steps. So again, I wouldn't be passing that off to the application. I would be using a builder pattern within this factory method to create a complicated object. These database objects kind of create themselves a little bit because when I call the command property on the database object, it goes through, it lazy loads itself, and in the process, it also lazy loads the underlying connection object. So those steps are somewhat handled automatically through that lazy load process. But there are going to be other types of objects that that doesn't apply at all. For instance, if you're creating business objects, you may have an order and then a bunch of order details underneath it. And there's a complicated way of creating the order with its customer, which may be a customer object, address, which may be an address object, and then all of the order details, all of which are individual objects put into a collection. That may be a fairly lengthy and complicated way of creating an object. In that case, you would use a builder to create that object within this factory method. So you would end up, instead of newing the object right here, you would call the builder build method and then return the output of that build. So that's how you could use that in conjunction with a factory method as well. So now we can use all three, the abstract factory, the factory method, and the builder pattern in conjunction with each other. Finally, we get to the application. And all we're doing on our get database click method is we're creating an iDatabase interface object. And we just set our database type to a default of SQL Server. The form has a radio button. And if OLAYDB is checked, then we'll set that database type to OLAYDB. Then we'll use our database factory to create the database of the appropriate type. And this database object implements the iDatabase interface. And that iDatabase interface is all that the application code knows about this object. It's all it has to know, and it's all it really wants to know. So off of that interface, it knows that there's a command property, and that the command property is IDB command type. It doesn't know that it's a SQL Server command type or an OLAYDB command type. All it knows is IDB command, and again, that's all it needs to know. And from there, it can run its command. So it can set a command type, a command text, can open the underlying connection on the command, create an iData reader, again, not a typed reader, not necessarily a SQL Server or an OLAYDB, just an iData reader. Do the read, close the reader, close the connection, so it can do all of the database operations that it needs to do. So now we've hit all of that relatively nasty object creation logic away from the application. Now this is just one method, and it would seem to be a little bit underwhelming that we're going to be saving a whole lot. But if you could imagine this as part of a data layer, and that every time we have some sort of method that calls querying for a customer, or querying for orders, or querying for product information, we have to open up the database and get the database command object every single time. Now, of course, we would like to call that in one method. This is the way of putting that into that method, and then also offloading our data layer with all of that creation stuff that's really at a lower level than we'd like the data layer to know about. So that's how we can use the factory method pattern in conjunction with the abstract factory to hide from our application relatively complex object creation code.